All right, we're going to jump right into this one here as we get going. Please give this uh, video a thumbs up, comment if you like it, and please subscribe to the channel. There's going to be a lot more fun videos coming out here in the future. So please subscribe. I very much appreciate it and uh, really look forward to sharing more videos with you all here too. Today we will be reviewing Hecate Peg by Audrey Wood and illustrated by Don Wood. This was a book that I actually hadn't heard of when I was growing up, but my wife loved it when she was growing up. She bought the book. We're going to go through it here today. Here is Audrey Wood and her husband, Don Wood. So a couple fun things about them. So Audrey has a, her own YouTube channel where she reads her own books, and that's a pretty awesome thing to be able to find the author actually reading her own stories. So I will post a link to that in the description. Please check out her website as well. Really easy to remember. It's AudreyWood.com. Very talented power couple right here. Um, Audrey's a very good uh, author. Don is an excellent um, illustrator, as we'll see through a lot of the things that we'll go through. So we're going to read through the book. We're going to talk about it. Um, I'm going to point out some things that I noticed upon a second and third read through of this as well. Uh, here's some inside cover art here, which um, just... I love the way that it looks just so authentic, like medieval times. And the next page here, I kept thinking it was going to be something else that was found later on in the book, where it's like the poor mother putting all of her children to bed. But it's not anywhere else in the book. It's not like a part of the story anywhere else. I think it's just to show kind of an extra part of that family's life. And I love to, if you look at the top, that one of the children is sleeping up there. That would have been the spot that I would have wanted as a kid. Like It's like having the top bunk. It's just like a cool, different spot than what everyone else has. But you can just see this poor mother has her hands full with all seven kids. So right from the beginning here. Down the dusty roads and far away, a poor mother once lived with her seven children, named Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I can see if you had seven kids, that would be an easy way to keep track of all of them too. So I don't really blame her for that. Every day before the mother went to market, her children helped her with all the chores. One morning, when they were finished, the mother said, Because you are such good children, you may ask for anything you want, and I will bring it home from the market. Some of the fun things I noticed here. So all the children are doing different things. You can see that Sunday, the littlest one here is getting a bath. One thing I noticed here in the background too, and I'll show you a zoomed in photo of this too. But I believe this is Tuesday in the background who is feeding some seeds to a little blackbird. I don't think that Don would have just thrown some random blackbird in here. Pretty sure this is the blackbird that we're going to see later on in the story too. And so maybe that blackbird is there because Tuesday was feeding the blackbird. But that's my own theory anyway. I just think with all the detail that Don spent drawing these, I don't think he would throw that in there and not have that be something that is called back to later. Also, pay attention to this stone bridge in the background. That's going to come into play in a few more pictures here as well. The children were overjoyed and knew exactly what they wanted. Monday asked for a tub of butter. Tuesday asked for a pocket knife. Wednesday asked for a china pitcher. Thursday asked for a pot of honey. Friday asked for a tin of salt, Saturday asked for crackers, and Sunday asked for a bowl of egg pudding. So two things here. I think actually on the page uh, before that we were looking at, that's actually Friday looking at it there. And the other thing here, so Sunday asked for a bowl of egg pudding. I had never heard of egg pudding before this. My wife had, but I'd never heard of it before. There's some pictures that Don put in the book here as well, but here's an image of what egg pudding looks like apparently so just an actual image of that apparently it pairs very well with roast rib um my wife said it's not supposed to taste like this but kind of the idea of like putting cranberry sauce on turkey you could have the turkey just separate some people like it more with cranberry sauce you could just eat the cranberry sauce just like you could just eat the egg pudding uh that was a little fun fact there um, and then on to the next here. The mother kissed her children goodbye and said, Now be careful and remember 
Don't let a stranger in and don't touch fire. The children locked the door behind her and began to play. Just like a lot of stories, you know, when they, they tell you the couple things to not do, you got a pretty good feeling that those are the things that the children are going to do. But they start off just kind of playing around, not really doing anything too terrible, just playing around as children would. It looks like, you know, we've got like some pretend sword fighting going on at the top, Sunday splashing some of those suds all over. But amidst all the fun, again, if we look into the background here at this bridge, who do we see but Hecate Peg? And here, specifically here, because it's just so mysterious, it reminds me of both the Ringwraiths slash Nazgul from The Lord of the Rings and also the Dementors from Harry Potter. She doesn't look like them at all once it's a closer-up shot, but like just this dark, hooded, shrouded, mysterious, evil person um, reminded me a lot of the, the Nazgul and the Dementors. So then, before long, a witch hobbled up the road, pulling a heavy cart. She rapped at the window and called out, I'm Hecate Peg. I've lost my leg. Let me in. We can't. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday called. Mother told us not to let a stranger in, calling back to what they were just warned to do so they know, yep, that was one thing our mother told us not to do. Hecate Peg isn't going to have it, though. Hecate Peg took a pipe from her cape and stuck it in her mouth. Come now, sweet chickens, she called. All I need is a light for my pipe. Bring me a burning straw. We can't. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday called. Mother told us not to touch fire. So there's our call back again. Hecate Peg reached in her cart and pulled out a sack. I'm sure your mother won't mind, she said. Look. If you let me in and light my pipe, I'll give you this. They look in the bag, leaning out the window. The children looked into the sack, and they couldn't believe their eyes. Gold! they cried. For a sack of gold, we'll let you in and light your pipe. The plot thickens here. Now, some really interesting things on this um, page as well. So one, you can see Hecate Peg's peg leg. Um, so she's got her cane, and you can see her pegged leg right next to that. So it does look like she lost her leg. Also, in the top right corner here, that's our little blackbird friend that I believe we saw earlier and we're going to see again. Don paid really close attention to how Audrey had written the story and wanted all the pictures to have those little details in it there. So just a great combination of both of their efforts there, too. Uh, on the next page here, I love, love the artwork here. Like, you can see how happy the children are to give Hecate Peg a burning straw because they know that they're going to get gold. So if you look at the expressions on all their faces, like, they're all just thrilled knowing that they're going to get gold from this, or at least thinking that they will. And it says, The children unlocked the door and let the witch in. They ran to the hearth and brought back burning sticks of straw to light her pipe. Oh, no. So then, what happens next? But when it was lit, Hegedy Peg threw the pipe to the floor and shouted, Now I've got you! And with that, the witch turned the children into food. What's really smart here, Dawn uh, made it so, one, they all kind of look almost ghost-like. You know, they're very transparent. But they're all going into the food that things were going to pair well with them. So you can see like in the middle there, Sunday is sitting inside of roast rib. Uh, you can see the honey. You can see the bread, cheese. So you can see all the sorts of things and the fish off to the right, the pie up high. You can see that they're not just kind of randomly turning into ghosts or just all of a sudden they're into food, but just like a beautiful drawing of how they're all transparent, kind of ghost-like, and they're turning into food. What food do they turn into? Monday became bread. Tuesday became pie. Wednesday became milk. Thursday became porridge. Friday became fish. Saturday became cheese. And Sunday became roast rib. So then Hecate Peg gathered up the food and loaded it in her cart. Without looking back, she pulled the cart down the road, over the bridge, through the town, across the field, and deep into the woods to her hut. So looking at these pages combined here, I took it 
almost like it's to represent the four seasons. So top left, we've got spring, bottom left, summer, top right, like they're harvesting things for the fall, and then the bottom looks like winter. I realize it's probably all just the same season, but it reminded me of four different seasons with it. And if we focus on this top right one, you can see that Hecate Peg, she she just doesn't care. She's going to go wherever she wants. She pulls this cart right through the field where they're harvesting things. You can see the tracks of the cart there. She just goes right through. She's got to be one strong witch because she's pulling them uphill a long way. Um, I guess it's food, so nothing says they would weigh the same as the children. But still, she's pulling a, a heavy cart a long way and really on one leg and then one peg leg. I guess I got to, you know, give her some props for that. That's a that's a lot of uh, weight to carry. So the next year, soon the mother returned home carrying a huge basket. In it were all the things her children wanted. A tub of butter for Monday, a pocket knife for Tuesday, a china pitcher for Wednesday, a pot of honey for Thursday, a tin of salt for Friday, crackers for Saturday, and a bowl of egg pudding for Sunday. If we look on the left here, and this is going to come out here again, but we see that little blackbird in the window. That's going to come here as well. Plus, in the picture on the right, that blackbird is also up high. So the mother calls out, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, she called, but no one answered. The mother found the witch's broken pipe and burnt pieces of straw on the floor. Tears flowed from her eyes. Who has taken my children? she cried. And then a blackbird, who had seen everything, took pity on the mother and hopped down to the window sill. Follow me, the bird chirped. It's Hecate Peg. She lost her leg. They let her in. So I think it's that same blackbird from the beginning. I think it's because Friday was feeding that blackbird, and that's why that blackbird stuck around. Uh, but that's just my own theory here. Grabbing the basket. No, grabbing her basket. The mother followed the blackbird down the road, over the bridge, through the town, across the field, and deep into the woods, to the witch's hut. So, here we go to the witch's hut, and we've got everything laid out on the table. I love this candle on the right, too. Like, it's just so waxy, but it just seems like an old tree. It kind of reminds me of some things from the cake scene from Sleeping Beauty, from the old Disney movie. Um, just how the cake was kind of sliding all over and they're putting candles on it. Kind of reminds me of that. And you can see here as well that Hecate Peg has just started to dig in to the pie, which as an adult, I think, so if it was Tuesday that wanted pie and now Tuesday has a part pulled out of the pie, will Tuesday like not have an ear now or a nose? But it's magic. It's fun. I probably shouldn't be thinking about it that much. But what does happen here? Hecate Peg had just sat down to supper and was about to take her first bite when she heard a loud knock at the door. Here we have a mother who's willing to do anything to help her children. And she says, Let me in, the mother called. I want my children back. You can't come in, said Hecate Peg. Your shoes are dirty. Then I'll take them off, the mother said. And so she did. So she's got her shoes off, she complied, and you can see in this left photo that She's got her socks on, but her shoes are taken off right there. Let me in, the mother called. I want my children back. You can't come in, said Hecate Peg. Your socks are dirty. Then I'll take them off, the mother said. And so she did. And you can see here that now in the next picture, her socks are off. They're laid on top of the shoes. So really good consistency here and attention to detail. Let me in, the mother called. I want my children back. You still can't come in said Hecate Peg. Your feet are dirty. Then I'll cut them off, the mother said, and she went away as if to do so. Now here, Hecate Peg's playing some mind games here, right? She could have just started and say, nope, you can't come in. Your feet are dirty. Cut off your feet, basically. But she's like, no, well, let's start with your shoes and then your socks. No, now it's your feet. And I mean, this is kind of the most gruesome part, too, for a children's book here. Um, but a lot of the old fairy tales were pretty gruesome, so this really isn't too bad in comparison. And she doesn't actually cut off her feet here, which, as we see, but instead, the mother hid her legs behind her and crawled back to the witch's door. Let me in, the mother called. I want my children back. 
When Heckety Peg looked down, she thought the mother had no feet, so she let her in. So the trick has worked. And then the witch pointed to the table. Here are your children, she said. If you can't guess them right the first time, I'll eat them for my supper. There's a lot of pressure on this poor mother. Keeping her feet tucked beneath her, the mother crawled to the table. How would she ever guess which food was which child? Kind of seems like she's given up here, but in despair, the mother looked into her basket. Here are the things my children wanted, she thought and now they will never have them. Hurry, said the witch. I am hungry. The mother looked at the food on the table. Speak up, said the witch. My supper grows cold. And the mother all of a sudden has a wonderful idea, so she uses that mother's intuition and starts to think things through here. It's like, okay, wait a minute here. Suddenly the mother knew what to do. Taking the things from her basket, she said, I know my children by what they want. Bread wants butter, that's Monday. Pie wants knife, that's Tuesday. Milk wants pitcher, that's Wednesday. Porridge wants honey, that's Thursday. Fish wants salt, that's Friday. Cheese wants crackers, that's Saturday. And roast rib wants egg pudding, that's Sunday. Quick as a wink, the children turned back into themselves. They hugged and kissed their mother, then hugged and kissed each other. At least most of them did. So if you look around, you can still see a lot of the food that the mother brought back is on the table. So we've got butter, the tin of salt, the crackers. Uh, we've got the knife. We've got Heckety Peg freaking out in the back. She's in despair. Some of the siblings are hugging. There's two are hugging on the left. Three of them are hugging in the middle. Two are about to hug on the right. But then, oh, Sunday. Sunday went to his true happiness, which was... Just that egg pudding. So, bless his heart. Jumping to her feet, the mother cried, I have got my children back, heckety peg. Now you'll be sorry you ever took them. And I like that their mothers have got like this powerful mama bear stance. The children are all like, I guess not all of them. Some are kind of cowering behind her. Some are like ready to go and rock and roll. But heckety peg is cowering. And there's a lot of attention here to that nasty peg leg of hers so then off to the right here she chased the witch around the hut out of the woods across the field through the town and onto the bridge a beautiful drawing of the village here you can see just a lot of the architecture a lot of the structures that the townspeople have built and just has such a magical feeling of what uh, things could have been like in that fairy tale time and environment and then lastly here and heckety peg jumped off the bridge, and was never seen again. So all we have down there is just her cane that's kind of floating there. So did she die? Is she like the witch from The Wizard of Oz and water will destroy her? Or did she just disappear and no one ever saw her again, but she's still out there? Anyway, this was a really fun book to read and review here. Please give this a like and subscribe. Go check out AudreyWood.com. Check out Audrey's channel as well. Give them a like and subscribe on their videos as well. And let me know if you have other requests on what you'd like to see next. I'm really enjoying doing this and having a great time. So thank you all for watching. Please share this and look forward to the next video.